What's up guys, it's Migs with Market Open, uh, another Monday mentorship session today. Uh, I'm going to let you guys in on some of my secrets, uh, my scanning secrets. So um, it's not even really a secret, honestly. It, they're, they're very, very simple. I've just, I've gotten uh, quite a few questions about um, what I look for during the day or how I find some of these stocks. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll start off at the very beginning. I'll, I'll try and make this, uh, relatively short and sweet. I know you guys probably got a busy schedule or, uh, you know, got other things to do. So I like to cram as much information as I can. Um, you guys can pause, take notes, do whatever, take screenshots, whatever you need to do. Um, but I'll, I'm going to show you guys what my scanning settings are for my pre-market scanning. Um, and what they are intraday either for stocks that are going up or down. They're super simple. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys with my scan settings. Um, so let's see here, pre-market movers. So my pre-market movers, all I have is volume and the bid price. That is it. But now, so there's also a trick to that. So obviously you want to be in stocks that have momentum either going up or down. Um, so after that, I just hit scan, and what I do is I classify them by volume. So if you classify them by volume, you will know which stocks have the most shares that are being traded during that time in pre-market. So you'll know kind of where the crowd is. So um, obviously the list would be a lot different right now. It's, uh, it's 5.15, so the markets are closed. So this list is going to be relatively large. But usually in the morning, you'll have like maybe 10, 15 um, stocks show up here. I classify them by volume, and then I'll do net change, or I'll do all um, percentage change. So I want to know what they are, uh, the amount that they've either gone up or down during that time. Um, but a lot of the times, most, mostly I'll do volume, so I'll classify them from highest to lowest, So because I want to know where people are currently at. So um, obviously after hours, um, Apple had a lot of volume behind it. So things like Apple, Facebook, Netflix, NVIDIA, Tesla, um, GE, uh, Microsoft, and things like that, I usually I don't look at those at all because they usually have higher volume uh, in pre-market time because they gap up and down with the market. So all those big name stocks, you can just go ahead and disregard those. Just make sure that none of the big names have uh, a catalyst, like a big catalyst behind them. Like right now, currently, Facebook usually gaps up or down with the market. But the thing is, obviously, Facebook is being investigated uh, by the government. So it's selling off or it's been selling off for like the past week or so. So um, but you'll notice that ABBV is on here. Um, actually, I think I had it pulled up. So ABBV has been selling off uh, as the 100 market hit 91 today. And uh, so I usually classify those. So now um, I'll look to see if it has a clean daily chart. Um, I'll go to Yahoo Finance and see what the float is. And then I will also look to see if the stock, the average range of it is, if it moves more than $2. If it moves more than $2, there's enough room for me to go in and out of, uh, to try to pull some profit out. So those are my pre-market scanners. And I just kind of go down the list and make sure that uh, it has enough volume over 50000 and then over $10 because I trade stocks over $10. And that's it. That's literally all I look for. Now, after the market has opened and I made my list and make sure everything is good and I like all the ones that are on the list, if, uh, if something else pops up, um, it really all depends whether the market goes up or down. So if the market goes up, then I start scanning for stocks that are up on the day um, and they don't necessarily have to have gapped up before, but if something is just starts popping up and goes up with the market, um, I'll go ahead and put that on my list. So my scan query for that is stocks that are going up. Um, what I do is I put mark price is above $10. So between $10 and $350, then percent change is above 3%. So it's had to have moved at least 3% um, within the past like uh, 30 minutes 
uh, is really when I start scanning for stocks that are move, moving either up or down. So it's had to move at least that much. And then I'm looking for stocks over 500,000 in volume. So also I want a lot of people to be trading these stocks so the patterns will fill out nicely and they'll end up working out. So like bull flags, flat top breakouts, things like that. You need a lot of volume behind those uh, types of type of patterns for them to work. So mark between 10 and 350, then I need it to be up. And then I also need a large amount of volume. Same thing I'll do on here is I'll do a percent change or I'll do volume, either one. Because if you notice, if you push percent change, a different set of stocks will pop up, but the volume is a little bit lower. But if you push volume, then you'll get higher volume things, um, things like Apple, ABBV, and all that stuff. Um, actually, I'm not even sure why ABBV is popping up. It's it's down, it's down two and a, and two, yeah, two and a quarter percent. I'm not really quite sure why that's popping up, but um, let's see here. And then the other thing I look for is uh, stocks that are gapping down. This is actually basically the complete opposite. So I'm looking for stocks that are headed down with the market if the market is headed down as well. So between 10 and 350, then percent change, I need it to be lower than 1%. So from the opening price, I need it to be 1% lower than what it originally opened. And then volume, same thing as 500,000 shares. Now an extra little trick um, that I learned is I actually put the list down here. So my regular watch list is here. And what I ended up doing is instead of having a longer watch list, I, I went ahead and added another personal watch list. So this is stuff that, uh, if you notice, it's the same name of my scan query. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and save it. It's Obviously, it's already saved on here under personal, either going up or down. And then you just hit the plus. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. So you'll hit the plus button here. And then you will click on watch list. And then this will pop up. The watch list will pop up. Click on this button. Click on personal, uh, either going up or headed down. And then so uh, throughout the day, if the market keeps going up, then I'll just go ahead and make the switch to all the stocks going up. Make sure I have um, everything kind of set up, either volume wise or percentage change. And then I'll keep a track of all the stocks that are are making a move. And then I'll just kind of cycle through them just to see if um, I can find a pattern. Um, that I can get into basically just a safe entry and I also try to make sure that it has a catalyst and I just go So yeah, that's that's basically all I do um, after I, I do my initial watch list for the day It's just I kind of keep track of some stocks uh, Whether whichever way the market is going so hopefully that helps you guys out and that hopefully that also uh, answers a lot of you guys' questions um, you know if a lot of you guys wanted my I guess um, what's it called the criteria behind uh, the stocks or the scans that I have on Thinkorswim. So it's it's really, really simple. I mean, it doesn't really require any special sauce. I don't have the float on there either. Um, honestly, the float doesn't really matter to me. I trade stocks that are 1 billion in float like MU because you can still make a lot of money because MU will move 4 or $5 within a day. All you have to do is find a safe entry. So float is really not that important to me, especially stocks over 10 bucks. It's not that big of a deal. Now, if you're... Um, if you're trading stocks under ten dollars, then there is a way to not per se. It's not called float on uh, Think or Swim. It's uh, it's like shares available, uh, but it's it's a little bit different. Uh, I might have a a um. I don't remember if I if I remember how to put it on there. But to me personally, it's not. I don't I don't ever have to look up float um unless I do it pre-market on, on Yahoo Finance. But other than that, it's really not that big of a deal to me. So uh, Thinkorswim is a little bit of a pain in the butt about getting float on here. And um, so like this right here, this uh, shares, that's I, I believe that is the float. But to me, I don't ever really pay attention to that. So, uh, But either way, hopefully that helps you guys out. Um, if you guys have not joined our Facebook group, make sure to do that. Uh, the link to that will be below. And also, if you guys have any questions, make sure to put that down in the comment section below. And if you guys are new to this, uh, my channel make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe you'll be notified every time that um, I actually put out a new video and I'll talk to you guys next time bye